Uh, hello, and welcome to Dolphin's Dive, the weekly strategically minded Handelabra stream hosted by Logic Dolphin. Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against those goals are not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra Games on Twitch or Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow me at Logic Dolphin on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, pretty much any avenue. Then of the Multiverse, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, and End, and Spirit Island are all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices. One Deck Dungeon is also available on Switch, and Sentinels of Earth Prime is in active development. You can find more information on those games at Handelabra.com. So, uh, we did Oblivion last week, right? Feels like a million years ago. But yeah, we did. It was a pretty uh, one-sided victory, as, as I recall. We are back to doing the um, the vintage one shots. So let's see where we left off on those. Nature calls. Oh boy. Back issue ended October twenty fourth, twenty seventeen. We've kind of not been keeping up with these as well because we we were at exactly five years ago. Now we're past five years ago. Because uh, this is what two and a half weeks ago. Which means it went active three and a half weeks ago, plus five years, of course. But, uh, yeah, we'll just play it. So there I was, walking down the streets of Megalopolis, minding my own business. When suddenly I heard a shout, and I looked up to see... Wait, you thought this was that story? No, 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 no. The shout was from my bladder, and I was looking up at my salvation. The shiniest tower of Hero Reserve Blues that I ever did see. I rushed inside, flashing my exclusive Hero Club card, trademark pending. That's when things got wild, because these weird vines started coming out of the toilet, and I really gotta go. This one shot requires mini pack one, mini pack three, the best one, infernal relics, and vengeance. Yeah, challenge Akash Buddha versus naturalist termination, uh, uh, termination unity. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, guys, and I'm Warden Taka in Freedom 5. Hello, Iron Moose. Welcome. Yeah, challenge Akash Buddha, which means that he, that she's immune to villain and environment damage, so we have to take her out ourselves. And this tends to be a marathon fight as the result, so we'll see how this goes. The natural order is one of chaos, flee and fail, you temporary beings. You oppose the true natural order. You must be stopped before it is too late. Can you really say that she opposes the natural order? The natural order is one of chaos, you oppose the true natural... I don't know. <laughs> All right, naturalist starting with bestial shift, environmental allies, and two primal charges. Termination unity starting with bee bot, brainstorm, raptor bot, volatile parts. Guys starting with I can do that too, retcon. Oh yeah, I'm that guy. And where did I leave that? And extreme primal words, haka. Extreme elbow smash, two ground pounds, and a haka of restoration. Let's see, extreme primal wardens die hard. Select a hero character card. Until the start of your next turn, redirect damage that would be dealt to that target to Haka instead. Whenever Haka is dealt damage this way, he regains 1 HP. It's been a while since I've seen that, so I just want to do that. So, let's see. Whenever an environment target enters play, the top card of the villain deck is played. Whenever a villain target enters play, the top card of the environment deck is discarded. When the environment trash is shuffled into the environment deck, Akash Buddha flips. She may only flip this way once per turn. Challenge. Akash Buddha is immune to environment damage and villain damage. Yep. So environment targets entering play, which actually this has none. So, okay. So we don't have extra card plays at least. But whenever a villain target enters play, the top card of the environment deck is discarded. That's all that's going to ultimately matter. The flip side is kind of going to change the rules. Whenever an environment target is destroyed, the top card of the villain deck is played. Whenever a villain target is destroyed, the top card of the environment deck is discarded. But again, there are no environment targets, so the only thing that's going to happen is villain target destruction, or villain targets entering play. And that's just going to result in environment deck discards, so I guess it's an easy environment. Akash Buddha is generally harder in target-rich environments, so it should be fairly straightforward, except for, of course, she's immune to non-hero damage. She's starting with ensnaring gravel. She doesn't actually have a setup, she just... Her setup is she enters play. <laughs> so this is the card she played. Ensnaring Brambles. And so uh, it hasn't gone off yet. Oh, because we're selecting it here. 
Select a hero target with the lowest HP. That target cannot deal damage until the start of the next villain turn. And our choices are Unity and Guys. Of which, I mean, Unity does have damage dealing here. Sort of here, but that's not going to go off. You can't get Golems into play this turn. So that's interesting. Guys, 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 his base power deals damage. I suppose it's going to be the person that might deal damage over the person that will deal damage. Alright, so this is base naturalist, so we have to get forms into play. We can't double or triple up on effects, unfortunately. Uh, reduce damage dealt to environment targets by one. Hero targets are immune to damage dealt by environment targets. Yeah, that doesn't work. Fun fact. But this also doesn't work because we have no forms. And this doesn't work because we have no forms. So do I play this so that we have ongoing destruction? Since you do have ongoing destruction, right? Destroy four hero ongoing cards. You destroy equipments, you destroy ongoings. Yeah, so I guess we do the fodder. Alternatively, we skip skip to draw two cards, but getting a form is better. So do we want to tank or do we want to... Something else. I guess it depends on what we want to do here. I don't normally do Gazelle because Gazelle doesn't really have any super exciting effects other than, I guess, the environmental allies is like its best thing. Because what does the Gazelle's thing say? Regain HP. You're at full HP, so that's lame. Other than that, it's just you can destroy ongoing cards. We don't have that in hand yet. Yeah, so I'm more inclined to just go for either offense or defense. It is a marathon fight, so defense might be better, but we can always get defense later. And yeah, let's do defense. Well, let's do offense. Offense. Oh, that also has a gazelle symbol on it. Right. I could brainstorm just to draw cards. Because while I don't have any means of getting golems into play, Unity's just going to flounder for a bit. It doesn't have to skip skip because her base power does say draw. It's not going to destroy golems. It's not going to get a golem from trash into play. I don't know that the damage from brainstorm is super exciting. One damage per target, but her bots can deal more damage. Let's just brainstorm. It's me, Raptor Bot, in Construction Pylon. Huzzah! We got Construction Form. Or Construction Pylon. And let's draw, and then let's draw. He drew a B Bot. And a Construction Pylon. Alright, we got lots of pylons for days now. Guys wants me to play Where Did I Leave That? So I probably want to hold on to Retcon, since there's nothing to destroy with it other than, I guess, these cards. I can do that too. We could search my deck for a form, which doesn't exist. I can destroy a non-existent golem, move a non-existent golem from my trash into play, and then draw a card. I mean, the exciting thing is we can get a golem into Guys' deck is really the main thing, but... That's not going to happen this turn anyway. Stream Prime Warden's Haka. We can get some redirect damage to guys, which could be a nice combo if he had the uh, gritty reboot, but he doesn't. So option number two. Oh yeah, I'm that guy. I can high five naturalist and then the, oh uh, yeah, and that guy will say, when this card enters play, destroy any other form cards, which will destroy the Deadly Crocodile, and that is very counterproductive. And no one else has ongoing cards, so that doesn't seem useful either. I could just play this just to draw two cards. It's generally nice to get cards from your trash, or one card from your trash, like getting best card ever back. But if I have nothing going on for me right now, then I guess I draw two. Guys, the Barbarian and gimmicky character. I mean, if I say no, then I get nothing, so I say yes. 
Do I want to play these cards? Probably not. This guys doesn't need hit points. This guys, the barbarian is better when comboed with things. So I'm going to draw. Another where did I leave that? So isn't snaring brambles actually a bad limb? Because this is gonna be hitting golems. Okay? It's Bebot. Interesting. Bebot doesn't deal damage directly, does it? Unity deals damage. And Staring Brambles is K. Let's hit Akash Buddha and make progress in that regard. Of course, it's still gonna go after Unity or guys for the time being, but that's okay. Well, I don't feel the need to ground pound. I would if we had a living rock slide in play, because that would be nightmarish. We don't need to hawk over store, so I guess it's elbow smash. I could skip skip here, because I'm not sure if I'm going to use this base power. Uh, anyone to protect? I mean, Haka has the most hit points, so we could definitely just soak up some damage. Uh, who is liable for getting hit, though? Lowest HP and highest HP, maybe? But highest HP is already Haka. Uh, let's hit guys with this. Because apparently guys is the best hero of all time. Got a different power, that's good. Training simulator. At the start of the environment turn, move a card from the villain trash into play. Target, that is. Put all primeval limbs into play. Let's see, Mountainous Carapace, and Arboreal Phalanges, that's it, another Primeval Eruption, okay, get another Arboreal Phalanges, get a Living Rock Slide, there it is, Mountainous Carapace, and then an Entomb. So what are the ongoings that she has just in Tomb? Oh, and also Allies of the Earth, which does nothing. When I said I should hold on to ongoing destruction, I guess I care more about in Tomb, but in Tomb... Uh, if all active heroes take damage this way, destroy this card. Obviously, we would like not to take the damage. Currently, Hawk is redirecting from guys, so it wouldn't work there. Obviously, it's not going off this turn, no. Unity dealing damage? No. Uh... Aka's going to take damage from Living Rock Slide twice, so I'm going to give this to Naturalist. I kind of don't want Haka to be lowest because then he can't deal damage. So he's currently not lowest, that's good. Yeah, this seems like a ground pound turn, by the way. Because we got, we got that Living Rock Slide, we got the Arboreal Phalanges. The mountainous carapaces are making damage to Akash Buddha not good. There is a bit of a problem where training simulator is in play, so villain targets and villain trash are moving back into play, but we can destroy that with the retcon at least. We don't need to save it for the ongoing destruction, I guess. Entomb is in play, but if we have if we have ground pound, then Entomb goes away. We could also put Bebot out, and then some damage to Bebot will take out Entomb. We don't have good damage dealing right now. Where's the Rampage? Another thing to think about is if I'm playing Ground Pound, am I saving the other Ground Pound and I'm discarding Haka Restoration and Taya Hawk? Because then I lose the damage deal that Haka had. Kind of disconcerting. Well... I don't think I want to change forms here. I think we want to keep the damage increase and use the Primal Charge. Because Beastial Shift, I would do damage, but also use a power, and then I would, I would probably like do damage here and then change forms. But I want to stay the Croc. Because we gotta get rid of these limbs. Hmm. 
I would say Living Rock Slide is the first priority because it's dealing two damage to each hero target, and so it's going to hit the the uh, golems. Arboreal Phalanges only hits highest HP. Let's do he's, he's okay. If I do put out Ground Pound, then we can do two Raptor Bots this turn, and they would be pretty safe. Dominable Force. Whenever damage will be dealt to a hero target, redirect it to the Naturalist. That's pretty good. That means you can also go like Ground Pound next turn. Ish. Not Ground Pound, but a Ground Pound type effect. So we get three damage on these? Yeah, so Rock Slide is gone. Then we do the other damage dealers. Since this is Marathon Fight, we don't really have HP recovery on most of these people. Or do we? Unity doesn't. Naturalist has a lot of HP recovery. Gaius has very limited with gimmicky character. Haka has Haka of Restoration. Unity doesn't. The best Unity could do is heal her golems. So... Probably preserving the HP on our team is smart. Let's get rid of the things that can deal damage. Get rid of the training simulator before it brings back the living rock slide. Don't want to play anything else. Yeah, that guy still doesn't need to regain hit points. We could play this just to change the order of what's coming up. Like, if the next card is another Primeval Eruption, we can discard that, and then we're not getting it! Aha! But... I'm not... I don't have future sense here. I don't know what's going to come up. I could play Where Did I Leave That to get Where Did I Leave That back. And I can just do that forever. And that would make zero progress. Uh, if I high-five Haka, we get a double ground pound, except it doesn't really do anything special. Super Ultra Koi? Uh, I think I just draw. Alright, Blatant Reference and Guys the Barbarian is like the most basic guys combo, and it works fairly well. Also works well with best card ever. I guess I'm ditching Taiaha. Doesn't matter. Hey, Mare. Okay. Mare's good. Freedom Tower is putting entry point out, except there's nothing to put it on, so Ironclad Maintenance Bay, which is moving cards around. And if we're smart, we will know what cards are where, but kind of tough. I guess Ensnaring Brambles is hitting a Raptor Bot, isn't it? Maybe Raptor Bots aren't as good as I would like them to be. But make sure we select the same one twice. But this one can't deal damage. Alright. So we have another ground pound round if I play Indomitable Force. Of course, I would prefer... I would, yeah, I'd have to play the Rhino. Uh, but we could... We don't need it because we don't have the Rock Slide. And we can use B-Bot to get rid of Entomb. Production pile on for two B bots. It seems okay. I don't need to Indomitable Force just yet. I could just do Primal Charge again. So, Raptor Bot number two can still deal damage. He's going to deal five damage, and that can finish off that Phalanges. I'll focus damage on the other one.
and get the bee bots. We have another construction button. Anyway, I sure hope that um don't get another rock slide this turn. That'd be pretty bad. Do I lean into Barbarian, Blatant Reference, best card ever? We'll do a bit of cleanup. And make some uh, significant dent in the Nakash Buddha. Might as well, right? So guys, the Barbarian first, because then off here, I'm going to play best card ever. I have more, I can do that twos, and I don't know what to do with them. And I guess I could super ultra kawaii, and then I can play, I can do that too on like Haka's turn. To use the base power. Not too bad. Sure. Total beefcake. Play the blatant reference and then we're gonna start discarding cards like mad. One. Finish off you. Compound gone, mare in play. So now we focus on the carapaces because we can't really hit Akash Buddha while they're out. And this is the only play I can make. <laughs> oh no, I have eight cards. Never mind. What am I talking about? Play this. Guys is power. I draw a card off of it. I just need to, to play the card. But I get to deal damage and draw a card, which is nice. And then I will discard. Discard total beefcake. Bit weird. Reveal the top card of each hero deck, either discard it or replace it. So moving to the bottom of each deck, followed by. Indomitable Force. Uh, no, we can keep that one. We have another ground pound ish thing. Ace the Augmentation. On one hand, that will power up guys a little bit. On the other hand, it's not going to get us progress into Unity's deck. I guess it doesn't have to be guys that uses it. Uh, it would have been really nice with Taiaha for the double effect. We could use... Oh no, she's not drawing it in turn, right? Yeah. I could try to play it on guys, but... That will be after the Barbarian has been destroyed. I'm gonna discard it because I want to make progress on Unity's deck. Damage dealt by guys is irreducible and cannot be redirected. That would be nice for hitting Akash Buddha while the Carapaces are here, but I'm gonna get rid of it because it's slow. Punish the weak. Potentially okay. The problem is until I get rid of the Brambles, which I don't necessarily want to. Not gonna be super nice because it will reduce damage dealt to the heroes, which will make Rampage safer for the heroes, but it will also make damage to Akash Buddha less unless there are no limbs in play. I'll keep it. And we hit Bebot. And Bebot. Goes after. Well, that currently dies to naturalist. I go for this one instead. Destroy the entomb. Clearing brambles number three. B bot can't deal damage. B bot cannot deal damage. B bot cannot deal damage. Okay, I get it. B bot can't deal damage. Okay. Natural Born Vigor, and then I can swap forms consistently. I'm not sure if consistently is the right word, but I can use the form's power and then also change. 
forms if I wanted. Um, I could also look at at uh, Akash Buddha's deck and the environment deck. I can't discard these cards right now, but I can at least know what's coming up. So, like, if I know there's a primeval eruption on top, I would put that on the bottom, and then, or I could put it on top and then discard. Oh, but I discarded the card. I don't think we need to do this unless I know that there's like them centering play, the indomitable force that is. I don't need the natural born vigor either. But then you have it. But deck control and knowledge is really strong. So let's do Akash Buddha and Freedom Tower. Oh, there you go. Entry point and entry point. Okay, well, entry point goes on top. We know that's coming up. Not doing anything unless limbs enter play, though. On the other hand, limbs are entering play, though. But this does destroy all environment cards, so that would destroy the entry point. We have no means of stopping this, right? And maybe I should have played <laughs> Indomitable Force. You can ground pound. Found the ground. I think you know, destroying the environment cards are fine because these effects aren't particularly strong. Putting cards from trashes to the bottom. Hmm. Trash is a good place to be, though. Over the top card of each hero deck and either discard it or replace it. Like, sure. But. Those guys have the shark jump. We discarded it. <laughs> we discarded it because we're like, we don't need it in this game. <laughs> Also, the so okay, top two cards is entry point. Top entry point gets played, and then Akash Buddha destroys all environment cards, plays the top card in the environment deck, which plays entry point, and then oh, it can be recovered. Yeah, I have word that I leave that. You're right. Oh well, it's not like meh. Nah. Nah. I put the cards in the wrong order for that now because I can't discard the top card and stop primeval eruption because I played the card that says play the top card of the villain deck which will play primeval eruption or I discard it and then she plays primeval eruption you know look what I found All right, carapaces are gone. I know I don't need the pile on this turn. Light crate will draw up to three cards. Seems pretty good. I can get Bebot into play and destroy Bebot. <laughs> destroy the Bebot. Move a B-Bot into play, draw a card. It puts B-Bot out of my trash. Or, well, yeah, puts one of the B-Bots from out of the trash into my deck. But destroying B-Bot means I do... Cool. But there's nothing to really destroy here. Because, like, whatever I destroy, then entry point covers the other one. This is really just do I want to draw an additional card. Hmm. I mean, like, I also deal two damage. Two damage and a card draw. I guess I'd be losing, like, these lackluster effects, so they're okay. Sure, let's do it. Destroy the B-Bot. Destroy whatever. Draw a card. Draw a card. All right, I have a pylon and two thingies. Two platform bots. And one last discard. I say, 
I'm gonna say bye to oh yeah and that guy because I don't think there's ever really gonna be a great target for that. Maybe Haka with um with punish the weak, I guess. I don't know. Where did I leave that? Guys, the barbarian. Let me see that. Let me see that is. I don't know. I find. Let me see that to be exceptionally weak. People are like, but it's so strong if if Mr. Fixer's in play. But like, how, how many times have I played guys with Mr. Fixer? Naturalist has no equipments. Unity's equipments I don't generally want to steal. I could steal supply crate to draw cards. Whoop de doo. I can steal construction pylon and then not have any golems to play with that. Whoop de doo. I can steal modular workbench to discard cards and nothing happens. Whoop de doo. I can steal scrap metal and get golems into my hand. Whoop de doo. <laughs> I mean, sure, that's definitely the funnest, I guess. I can steal mare to draw cards. Except my base power already does that. I can steal Taiha and deal damage to multiple targets, which with guys the Barbarian would be really good. But yeah, I find it pretty meh. But yeah, let me see that in guys the Barbarian, right? But we do have this combo again. So I probably want to hold on to that. Otherwise, I would get best card ever back. I think I'm going to say yes to this. Good. Let me draw. I don't want to play these. We're almost 10% of the way there. And if I want to keep my golems safe, because there is a percentage chance that it plays huh, three living rock slides. Yeah. Because like top card is disrupt the field. And then second card is Primeval Eruption. So like, 11 cards left in the deck. Three of them are Rock Slides. You're looking at the top four. So, like seven choose three, divide by 11 choose three for how likely it is that that's going to not play a Rock Slide off that. Um, I'm pulling out a calculator to do this, but I don't know how to do it on this. It's the Inspire, which is a bit weird. How would it work on... Combination. It's 10? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I do equals Combin... So 7 choose 4 divided by combin 11 choose 4. <laughs> it's a 10.6% chance that we don't get a rock slide in play, but that's only off the, off of the top clause. Then it plays an additional card, which could be another disrupt the field, or it could just be, you know, rock slide directly. But yeah, it's a 10.6% chance that the first four cards that are played off that eruption. Yeah, so it's definitely ground pound. Apaka has three dominions and guys uses yeah I'm that guy and him. Both Haka and guys draw three off each environment destroyed environment card. Yep. Because Dominion says whenever an environment card is destroyed, you may draw a card. And oh uh, yeah, I'm that guy says Treat this card as if it had the game text. If every ongoing card in that player's play area replacing their hero's name with guys, and you on that card means guys' as player. So yep. Oh yeah, and that guy could draw three cards off Dominion. We don't have Dominion in play though, or in hand, or anywhere. But it sure would be nice for the disrupt the field coming up, huh? Oh no, it's entry point. Oh no, it's Disrupt the Field. Oh no, it's Primeval Eruption. 
Countless carapace? Wait, we just hit the 10.6%? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Also, Earth Sacrifice, hello. That was gonna stop the ground bound if it... If... Yeah, okay, so we have to destroy all of these. Tragic, but... Increase all cold damage, reduce all fire damage, and return deal cold damage. Dr. Frost's cryo chamber. What are you doing, Ryan? Just chilling? Is it pretty cool in there? Come on, don't give me the cold shoulder. <laughs> Deal each target cold damage. Well, Indomitable Force would be really good here. It's two cold damage to each target, redirects to naturalist, reduces it by one, and then the rhinoceros also reduces it by one and redirects to naturalist. So it seems like it's a pretty good turn for Indomitable Force. And Rhinoceros is in the deck. I will destroy this to draw two cards. Okay, damage. Not that one. This one. Damage. We do have the carapace, so damage. Damage. And then damage. And then damage. Wait, we missed every single rock slide? Damn. Because that was... They were the bottom six cards? From when we were looking at this? So that's a 12% chance that all three of them were in the bottom of the deck, huh? Or bottom six cards of the deck, that is. That's interesting. Hey, do we have any means of dealing cold damage, by the way? I don't think so. We have Cryobot someday, but we don't have that. Okay, so I could do Blatant and Guys again. Discard. Some of that makes sense. The Ironclad Bay was pulling them. Oh, you're right, because they were moving around there. Yeah, so it wasn't really a percentage chance because we knew where the cards were. But we only had one interplay, right? With the top card of each trash pile under its associated deck. So... One of those is a Phalanges, I'm fairly sure. One of those was a Rock Slide. Probably, maybe. They put two under there? We had two of them in play? Oh. Alright, well then I guess I'm just dumb, okay? <laughs> I destroyed two of them and I don't remember. I remember one, I don't remember two. Do I remember two? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> it's been 39 minutes into the stream and I can't remember what's been going on. Wow. Sure. Barbarian. And Blatant. Do the basic one, two. Ready reboot for once I'm out of cards. Punish the Week is going to be detrimental right now, so I will skip. Rid of that crap. Freedom Tower has shuffled. Akash Buddha has shuffled. And we have Dr. Stinson's lab back again. Yep. 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> Alright, this is gonna be a tab because there's gonna be a lot of this. I could also hit this turn on this because I'm definitely gonna do it this turn. Okay. Alright, Naturalist's top card, Cornered Beast. There will probably not be more non-hero targets than hero targets most turns. Flash Forge is pretty good. Gimmicky character. Let's discard that one. <laughs> be consistent. Discard that one. It's damage, but I want card draw. Melanges. Okay, so, uh, and this is the Pelagi, so this is three damage, would be only one. I'll take it. You're back here. Force again? The last one of my immunity cards, but the cryo chamber is still hot. Active, but we can be bought it away. So if the bottom two cards are rock slides, then it's a one in three. The top card, top card is a rock slide, but then there's also a disruptive field there, and that would also play a card. So it's really like one in three that it's the one on top, one in three that it's disruptive field. In the case that it is, it's a one in two. Right? Yeah, because it's, yeah, so one in six. Yeah, so one in six that is disrupt the field into rock slide. So one third plus one sixth is a half. So it's a 50% chance that a rock slide's coming out. However, Unity can't play Golems this turn. That's just sad. Also, guys without a cards and but yeah, so fifty percent rock slides this turn, which means it's a fifty percent that rock slide is the turn afterwards. Because if it's not playing a rock slide, it's either phalanges or it's disrupt the field into phalanges. In which case, Rock Slide is the next card. Yeah, so it's just, do I feel like it's going to be Rock Slide or not? And then there's going to be like two rounds of Rock Slides after that as well. Because of course. But I guess it's still okay to do Force because leaving this Cryo Chamber out for a little bit longer means that it's going to hit, it's going to hit the Phalanges at least one more time. Is what that means. For sure. We'll do that. And I'll keep the Rhino, so I'll draw cards. Is this Akash? Is this. This isn't Naturalist's Nemesis. Huh. What is Naturalist's Nemesis? And who is Akash Buddha's Nemesis? These are questions. Isn't Naturalist Nemesis the, um, Deadline? I feel like it's Deadline. Archon Adept is Akash's Nemesis. Yeah, that's right. That's definitely right. We are 20% of the way through. So, I don't want to play cards, probably. I could play Robot Reclamation, not put any bots on top, but draw a card off that, but that's not any better than using my base power, and I want to not destroy my golems, because I'm not getting a new golem back, and I want that B-bot to destroy the cryo chamber for me. 
So this is a skip skip. Indomitable Force, but I don't have to redirect damage from guys if I play the reboot, because guys would like to take damage with the reboot. It's better to do that. Woo! Free card! Still don't want to punish the weak right now. Savage mana could be really good. Stops the limbs from coming back. That said, if if there are no limbs in the deck, then she is more likely to destroy equipments and ongoings. It's a Dominion. At the end of the environment turn, play the top card of the environment deck. And here is where the world's greatest assistant ever works! Legacy was giving another tour of Freedom Tower. Aminia Twain, Aminia Twain, Aminia Twain smiled demurely at the guest. Demure. Damage! 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 And then, yes, this turn and tap. All right. Crafty Assault, ongoing destruction. There are no ongoings coming up for a while. It is damage, but I discard. We discard those. A brainstorm. That's card draw. Likely though, it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna flash forward, so I'm just gonna reshuffle the deck. This question is, do I want brainstorm in the deck or not? I guess I do. Still okay because it draws cards. Card draw is a really strong mechanic. Look what I found. Look what I found. We have no more blatant references or guys to barbarians because they're in my discard. I'm gonna discard it because I want card draw. Hey, that that's card draw. I don't think I want it though. I want a rampage. Front desk plays an entry point. Oh no. Uh, go on the front desk <laughs> because it's more likely to play environment cards. Are you going to disrupt the field, though? No, you're just going to play the rock slide. Okay. We still have the frost cryo chamber, which is good. Uh... Damage to guys? Yeah, because card draw, right? And then damage to guys. It is a bit annoying though because of the plus one damage. I think we redirect the golem damage, especially the bebot damage. It is only one. One to naturalist, three to golems. I probably also want to save the platform bots. They do have a minus one, but it's only one damage to naturalist. I'm willing to take the golem damage. I think we can let everyone else take the damage. Maybe not Unity. Because Unity has a harder time healing than the rest of the team. And that she can't heal. The most damage we've had this game. 
those that's all of my damage prevention measures. So if the bottom two cards are rock slide, then we know the next card is our boreal phalange. So we get rid of the rock slide and we use Bebot to kill Frost's Cryo Chamber after it deals damage to these guys. So we should be okay. I kinda wanna do resilience hide. It's extra tanky. I mean, Rock Slide dies to Raptor Bots, so that's okay. How many pylons do we have? We still have two. Obviously this turn, Unity Flash Forges for pylons. Well, pylons and other things, of course. How many other Raptor bots are there? There's one more. Like, Resilient Hide is the tanky approach. Do I want to be more offensive and have to use this power if I want to? Eh. Damage is coming from Unity primarily, anyway. Pylon, Pylon. Raptor bot. Any reason to take stealth bot? Also, discarding these golems means they can be brought back with base power. Probably discarding them all is totally fine. There's platform bots in here as well. No, there's not. We have all the platform bots. Okay. Well, if I want max damage, it would be platform bot and raptor bot next turn. I will discard a B bot and a turret bot then. So pylon, pylon, raptor bot. Also, champion bot might be more damage than platform bot, actually. This is the last one. Let's take stealth bot. Might save a raptor bot someday. And I don't want to do this because I want the B bot to be destroyed by the cryo chamber. I guess I could put B bot in the play and destroy. Oh, but I don't want to destroy the cryo chamber. I can destroy entry point in the chance that we don't get disrupt the field. It's damage. And a card draw. Uh, those Raptor bots are dealing six damage. Definitely going. That's going to be a lot of damage, but we're not going to be able to play it before, like, B-Bots die. Or Raptor Bot dies, rather. Ready Reboot's Revenge? Do this. Oh yeah, I'm that guy? We could high-five! Aka. He has Dominion now, right? Doesn't have Rampage. But in the event that Akashbuda like blows up the environment. Which is a 50% chance. Anything else to high five there? High five Mare? Or no, Mare is the equipment, never mind. I also want to play Gritty Reboot again. I want to take damage from Frost Cryo Chamber, though. And we don't have damage happening anywhere else. Jeez. No, the cold damage doesn't happen because it's reduced by... Oh, it is increased by one. Sorry, it's backwards. Cold damage does do damage. And that is the last time that this will have a damage increase.
There's the rampage. Entry points return. We want to play an environment card. Uh, ironclad maintenance bays, meh, mission control. I don't think I want. I guess he's landing pad. Stop environment place. Okay, so before the cryo chamber goes away, we deal damage to the villain targets. I'm gonna assert dominance and try to hit Akash Buddha. And then we take out Bebot. Bebot says damage Akash Buddha. We destroy the cryo chamber. Let me draw cards. Yay! Alright, Naturalist's deck. Predator's Eye. I want that. Unity has a modular workbench. I want that. That's more reliable than the pylon. Look what I found. Damage. I'll keep it. I discarded it last time, but I'm going to keep it this time. I'll get rid of Haka Restoration. Haka's good on HP. Aha! Field is disrupted. Which means that we're getting lots of cards. And the rock slide. Which I was told it was two rock slides, but I was right. It was the phalanges in a rock slide. The raptor bots are dying because I was given wrong information. So there we go. They're dead. Bye, raptor bot. Couldn't have really done anything to stop that though. Or out of the damage preventions. I will regain the hit point, thank you. So I don't know what's next though. Phalanges or rock slide. It's probably rock slide followed by phalanges. If I were to take a guess, that would be wrong. So, so basically, I'm not piloting to get a raptor bot out. Not while there is a thing. So, also, medical ward got played. At starting arm and turn, each target regains a hit point. Okay, cool. It slightly heals up the platform bots, actually. It heals them to max. That's good. Uh, there are not more non-hero targets than hero targets. That's for sure. Without the, ra without the raptor bots, we have enough damage to kill the rock slide. We have six damage here. One damage there. Two damage there. So it's like nine. I have to ping it with something extra. Maybe piloning the other platform bot will be good enough. Pylon the raptor bot. Or platform bot and stealth bot. I mean, with the stealth bot, I could play the raptor bot. Even if the rock slide comes out, the raptor bot is protected. The raptor bot will deal 5 damage. So 5, 3, and 2 kills the rock slide. I don't care about the phalanges that much, or do I? We do have this rampage coming up, but we probably want to play Savage Mana first. Um...
Savage Mana and Punish the Weak followed by Rampage. That's a lot of cards to have to play, though. Definitely Punish the Weak first. Is it even first? I don't know. Then I can't hit Akash Buddha with Mare. For only, I'd only hit her for one. I mean, if I play it first and I'm hitting the rock slide, because if I hit the rock slide this turn anyway, then I don't have to deal eight. I just have to deal seven. It would be two sixes, or two threes and a one. Trying to make my damage optimal here. Um, let's do Natural Bone Vigor. Sure, we're gonna find the power card that does things. Yay, we did! And combo that with other things. I guess now I have to actually play this, or I don't. I mean, I don't have to. Um. I could just go Crocodile at this point, probably. Unless I'm wrong about the order of things. In which case, the Rock Slide would prevent two damage. I'm also not hurting for hit points right now. Let's go damage. My trash. All right, let's get the Raptor Bot and Stealth Bot out. So you're doing five. Well, we said it was gonna be three, three, and one. Yeah. Although, guys, this damage is actually going to be two if we're playing with what I found. We don't have to. Oh, yeah, and that guy to punish the weak would be pretty bad this turn. Can't do it in Naturals ever unless I want to copy a form after it enters play. I guess I could do look what I found and then play say cheese. And off the say cheese, I could play something else. I could play say cheese into look what I found, deal the one damage that way. Sure. I don't want to super ultra kawaii because these cards aren't really great for playing. Another rampage. Rampage with stealth bot is actually really safe. Well, stealth bot and punish the weak because it will deal zero damage to stealth bot. Pretty interesting. Player may discard their hand to destroy an environment card. That's pretty costly. It is a rock slide. Well, at least we know what is where. So the Raptor Bot redirects. Platform bots can take it. They will heal it back with Medical Ward. Um, you're also taking one. Naturalist is going to take two because we don't have the minus one anymore and it's not exactly one. 
I think everyone else just takes it. Even unity. I don't want to regain that because I'll lose that. So I play this one. Fucking combo effects. Goals to rampage this turn, then I want Ro Rock Slide to be down to six. Also, I want Arboreal Phalanges. I'm gonna still prioritize Arm Attribute regardless. We're definitely rampaging this turn. We have the Punish the Week, so... Let's do the Pylon. Raptor Bot should be safe, because we know the, inv the we know you're playing Flint. Lots of extra damage here. We just have to get, th get them down to six or less. Easiest way might be guys? I don't actually have that much damage. Say cheese and base power. One and one. We have to probably do that on the rock slide and do phalanges. One of these. And everything else goes on Akash Buddha. the week the order is super important oh we're not we don't have a uh, savage mana that's fine we're just destroying these it's okay because brambles is not really one i want to get rid of anyway because that's only ever going to hit golems Really, the rock slides I would like to put under Savage Mana to stop them from coming back, but we're only gonna get one if it was already in play, so fine. Well, we know exactly what the environment's playing now. Environment is playing Entry Point. Okay. Okay. And then all of this redirects to Stealth Bot. I'm going to fast forward this. And I still have a power. And Akash Buddha is the weak. Hit points. And I don't want to discard my hands. Put this on security station. Keep the medical ward. We could put it on the medical ward and use the security, security station to get rid of entry point, but I don't want to. It's expensive. Our Boreal Phalanges. Uh, no. Okay. So because of of punish the weak we could like if we focus our efforts on arboreal phalanges so that we could then play savage mana and merit into savage mana we'd have to waste a bit of damage but it's probably okay because like or we could just do measures how about that or, oh. <laughs> this is not mint but it's also five years old, so it was never going to be mint anyway. I hit the wrong thing because I was expecting the question of, do you want to discard, do you want to draw cards? But I forgot I have to activate the croc, and then I say I don't want to draw. 
That's the order. Reduce that damage by the number of environment targets in play. The answer is zero. Also, Power Shockwave just does it. Awesome. But I don't have to waste any damage, and I don't want to destroy any of my golems, I think. Uh, unless I want to replace, like, Platform Bot with Raptor Bot, which is valid. That's more damage. Platform bot has evolved into Raptor bot. Do 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 do. I don't think we've. Oh, we did have Raptor bots dying. Never mind. I was gonna say I don't think we've killed a Raptor bot this entire game, but there are Raptor bots in my trash for a reason. Okay. Uh, damage. How, do, how does ideal damage? The answer might surprise you. I could do, where did I leave that to get things back? That's pretty lame. I guess I could do, I could, where did I leave that to get a little beefcake? It's not my hand. Oh, they're both in there? Oh, right! One of them got moved. Or both of them got moved. I can't even bring it back. I could try to draw for it, though. But with Rampage, we could redirect what would have been one damage to guys to three damage to Akash Buddha. That's basically a three damage card. I have to play two cards with guys to do that. do Super Ultra Kawaii and then do a bunch of cards, that might be fine. See if I draw the thing with this, the one in six or something? No, it's not, because you know what the bottom cards are theoretically, so it's a bit weird, but yeah, I got the total beef kick. Good. Oh yeah, I was not going to play Savage Man, I was going to play Rampage. <laughs> I was like, I could Savage Man. But, at this point, it's not super exciting, but Freedom Tower has shuffled. And Akash Buddha is also shuffling, so it's a completely open season as to what's going to happen. This is Total Beefcake. Also, it's 4 damage, so it's pretty good. And then the rest redirects to Stealth Bot for zero. And I have my base power. Or not base power, I have my power phase. Any damage here? No. I could draw a card off Retcon. Get rid of that entry point. Could have high-fived Haka first, but then I would have destroyed it on Naturalist's turn. Stealth bot is at max HP. Nope. Reveal the top card of each hero deck. This is the third time we've seen this card this game. I don't 
care about having multiples of those. I don't like that card. Guys, this deck is empty. <laughs> okay. No, keep the rampage, please. All right, Akash Pudo, what are you doing? Rejuvenating Entropy, destroying Mare. And nothing else happened. So, rip Mare. This would have also restored environment targets and primeval limbs to their max HP, but none of those existed. Womp womp. Have another Predator's Eye? I do. Awesome. Easy. Activate. Do not draw. Also, total beefcakes in play. Lest we forget. Which is important because... I can hit Akash Buddha twice. Uh, anything to play here? A retcon? <laughs> Still nothing? I could have played Selling Out, I suppose. If, if I had thought about that on Haka's turn. Or unless I just drew it, I don't know. Get rid of the security station because it's dumb. Oh god, it's your rampage. It's over. Well, that was not a super long fight. That was just over an hour in the end. Not two or three hours as these tend to be. I could modular workbench to get B-Bot, or I do the same trick and I replace platform bot with Raptor Bot. So instead, I will brainstorm to draw more. Which is exciting because I get to hit Akash Buddha. Twice! Not more than that. These Raptor bots are dealing 8 damage now? 9 damage. Right, 8 damage per, but plus 1... No, 7 damage per, but plus 1 from Champion Bot and plus 1 from Predator's Eye. Alright, well that was definitely Unity's ga game to shine. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, I guess, like, damage prevention also is what led Unity to shine. So if we didn't keep the Raptor bots in play for that while, we wouldn't have kept the Primeval limbs in check. But that worked fairly well. That's the first game of the night. Not the only game of the night, so that's pretty good. So where are we at now? Nature Coals. Now I do the Kraken Rises. Below the thunders of the Upper Deep. Far, far beneath in the abysmal sea, this ancient, dreamless, uninvaded sleep, the Kraken sleepeth. Faintest sunlights flee about his shadow hides. Above him swell huge sponges of millennial growth and height. And far away into the sickly light, from many a wondrous grot and secret cell, unnumbered and enormous polypi. Polypi win. <laughs> I don't know what this. Winnow with giant arms, the slumbering green. Here hath he lain for ages at will lie, battening upon huge sea worms in his sleep, of the latter fire shall heat the deep, then once by man and angels to be seen, and roaring he shall rise and on the surface die. Alfred Tennyson, 1830. Is that an actual quote? I thought it was going to be based off of like deep into the sea or something like that. Below the thunders. Oh yeah, that's the poem, The Kraken. Literally the poem, The Kraken. It is literally The Kraken. Okay. Okay. See, this is why I failed English. <laughs> okay, not really. Poems are weird, dude. Alright, well, it's challenge... Um, challenge Voss. I forget what Challenge Voss is about. Whenever he flips, plays a card, I think. Uh, versus Extreme Farm Wars Tempest. Is that extreme? And Elemental Wrath, Absolute Zero. Freedom Six, Absolute Zero, whatever. And Eternal Haka for Sherzies. And you. <laughs> 
and of course it's in uh I mean this is Fnatic, of course. What is this version? It's Redeemer Fnatic? I think it's Redeemer. And this is in uh Ruins of Atlantis. So this is kind of heavily hinting that the top cards of the environment deck are Krakens, is what I'm taking away from this. Finally, a Meridian with some fight. The rest of your species made decent soldiers, but your genes will make them my elite. My scientists will take you apart first. Hide behind your army, cowardly conqueror. The lightning comes when I call, and nothing will stop me this day. That's Tempest voice. The challenge boss. Whenever Grand Warlord boss flips, the top card of the villain deck is played. All right, I was right on that. And this is Extreme Prime Warden's Tempest. Tempest deals one target, one lightning damage. The non-character target dealt damage this way loses any end of turn effects on this card until the start of Tempest's next turn. So he prevents things from going off. Fairly good against Voss. You have Chain Lightning, Cleansing Downpour, Flash Flood, and Grievous Hailstorm. Freedom 6, Absolute 0 has Cold Snap, Frostbound Drain, Impale, and Null Point Calibration Unit. Eternal Haka has Dominion, Haka of Shielding, Mare, and Taiha. This is the one where he draws a lot of cards. And Redeemer Fanatic has Brutal Censure, Divine Sacrifice, End of Days, Final Dive. Yeah. So, start of the game, cards are revealed from the top of the villain deck until four minions are revealed and put into play. At the start of the villain turn, if there are no minions in play, Grand Warlord Devos flips. At the start of the villain turn, if there are 10 or more minions in play, the plan has been overrun by the Therathian army. Game over. Reduce damage to Grand, Warlord, Grand Warlord Voss by 2 for each minion in play. And also, he, whenever he flips, so an extra card is played. On the back side, at the start of the villain turn, if there are 2 or more minions in play, Grand Warlord Voss flips. Reduce damage to Grand Warlord Voss by 1 for each minion in play. At the end of the villain turn, Grand, Grand Warlord Voss deals the hero target with the highest HP, 3 energy damage, and the hero target with the lowest HP, 2 fire damage. So what we got. I on the answers apparently. Shock infantry. The TCF Conqueror. So basically damage followed by damage. Followed by damage. Followed by damage. Followed by damage. Well then, PC of Conqueror is here, and he's kind of a pain. 15 HP is a lot. Card is immune to melee damage. At the start of the villain turn, destroy a hero ongoing card. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals each hero target 3 fire damage. You do not have your isothermic transducer, otherwise you would be happy with the fire damage. One option is to use end of days, which means that we're basically going to take off turns here. Um, we can't hit boss with four minions in play, so like Chain Lightning is not going to make any progress. There's no environment card, so Flash Flood makes no progress. Cleansing Downpour and Grievous Hailstorm will go away. We could use them to draw more, I suppose, but... In episode zero, we could play Frostbound Drain and, like, nothing else. Aka could just draw cards. Aka have Shielding to draw two, and then maybe get something else with that. A discard another Haka card to discard with that, maybe. Raise the next damage to Haka by two. Like, is there a reason to not play End of Days here? Like, if we're following the suggestion that the top card of Atlantis is Kraken, or the top three cards are Krakens, then we need to leave things in play for the Krakens to hit, which would be minions, most likely. So we could try to leave the minions in play. The Shock Infantry is the better one because the Ion Lancers will make the lowest tart lowest or Psy Weavers hit everyone. I guess technically Psy Weavers worse than Ion Lancer because it hits everything. Best damage we could do would be Chain Lightning, of course. Four on the Conqueror, and then three on the Psy Weaver and two on an Iron Lancer, and we can take it out. We could do base power on the Conqueror to stop its end of turn damage. 
and all it will do is destroy hero ongoing cards. We could just not play hero ongoing cards, play equipments, not play end of days. So then the Conqueror isn't going to do much. That's probably fine. If there's no ongoing cards and this guy's end of turn is skipped, then that doesn't do anything. Could also just not hit hit it with this and take out both Ion Lancers in the Psy Weaver. Leave the Ion Lancer, or leave the Shock Infantry to be taken out by Kraken. Sure. This absolutely minimizes the damage that's being dealt. There is a chance, though, with this line that boss will flip if the Kraken comes out and then he plays end of days immediately, or not end of days, um, immediately plays force deployment, which immediately destroys itself and then these guys come back. But we still have end of days for that. Kill the one day there. I probably could have done it a bit better and done two damage to the Conqueror or something like that. Well, mm. I also don't have to kill the Psyweaver. If, if we assume the Kraken's coming out, then the Psyweaver dies to the Kraken. But I can't play an ongoing here, so I'm playing Null Point. Equipments are safer. They are never hit by Voss. The only thing that ever gets destroyed is ongoing cards with the Conqueror. And this environment doesn't destroy anything. I could play Divine Sacrifice to kill the Psy Weaver, I suppose. Or take the chance that a Kraken comes out to kill the Psy Weaver and then we don't flip Voss. Or kill it with Ayaha? We, well, I guess the Conqueror will be out and the Kraken can always hit the Conqueror. If I do that, it guarantees that Voss flips. <laughs> Let's do it. I can't hit the Conqueror with this because it's melee damage, and the Conqueror is immune to melee damage. Savage mana is pretty good. Stops the stupid force deployment. Get a final dive, I suppose. Redirect damage to Fanatic, or just Brutal Censure. Let's Brutal Censure. I think I do want to get rid of the Conqueror, though. Because it's stopping me from playing ongoing card. Otherwise, I would hit boss. Zealous offense, pretty good. But we need damage to supplement it. Oh my god, it's a Kraken! <laughs> oh my god. Alright, he, this he flips. He plays Gbound Firesworn, so he's not forced deploymenting yet. If he does play Force Deployment, we probably instead play End of Days. Because that is a way of bypassing the Force Deployment. It does mean that the setup that we just played will go away, though. So, where are we at, then? Inbound Guard is annoying. Not the worst, though. He flips if there are two or more in play? Yeah, okay, so there are two right now. So he is at risk of flipping, but currently the Kraken kills one of those minions. Do I have to deal damage with this? If the character target dealt damage this way, yeah, so I can't actually hit the Conqueror. Because this damage, this reduces the damage of the Conqueror. It's upsetting. So then I guess I'm going to Grievous Hailstorm instead, because that will be more useful. But the Conqueror is going to be dealing fire damage this turn. And final dive the guard into the Conqueror. Uh, yeah, I could have. Projectile. Yep. But I lowered its HP by a bit, so it's a bit less good. Do that. I 
guess the thing is we are losing an ongoing card, but I guess we already played an ongoing. Savage mana will kill the... yeah, okay. Okay, this is good. But I'm not final diving then, but I am getting minions under savage mana now. So there's less risk of force deployment being a problem. Redirect all damage to Fnatic. How about I do three damage four times to Fnatic? How, how about that? <laughs> Uh, Undaunted's not going to do much. Ever going to do anything? Whenever exactly one damage be dealt. What deals exactly one damage? Also, what deals five or more damage is the other clause. But I don't think things are dealing five or more. I guess if we have a, a victor in play, there could be something that deals that much. Maybe... I guess Kraken's deal five. How about I divine sacrifice the Kraken? <laughs> that seems wrong. Environment also does damage, but you're right, it does. It has two of those. So yeah, it can eventually get to five, indeed. I can play Undaunted so the Conqueror takes out because none of these are going to be useful right now. I can chastise the Conqueror. Double Kraken. Getting saucy in here. There's a force deployment. Do we have ongoing Do we have ongoing destruction? Ow, oh, by the way. Unfortunately, Tempest is always gonna be lowest. <laughs> At least for now. We can stratosphere the deployment. Unfortunately, Tempest's on borrow time right now, because Voss is gonna keep hitting Tempest for three. Unless we redirect Voss's damage, which is probably acceptable. If we can get absolute zero lowest with a null point, that would be fine. We can get a null point, but it'll be a while before he gets lowest. Also, Tempest is at risk of getting hit by Krakens, but we can at least keep them distracted with the Conqueror. Uh, do we have ongoing destruction... We do not. We just have end of days. And, the, and uh, well, Absolute Zero does have ongoing destruction eventually, but Haka doesn't. Tempest also has it, but not yet. And so does Fnatic without end of days, but not yet. Because if we could destroy a force deployment early, then we could get some of them mopped up with Cabbage Mana before they actually deal the damage. I think for now we Stratosphere it. And Stratosphere, uh... Hmm. The cards from under Savage Mana into play? Or back on top of the deck? That'd be exciting. I think we need to leave this in play, which means we need it to stop its end of turn damage. We could flash flood to get rid of the Krakens. Those... Also, the Conqueror is now tied for last, so we're fine there. Let's get my null, my uh, not my oh, null point, my isothermic. Is there a risk of this dying? All the way collapse, it's immune to it. Mystical defenses is only two. I can definitely hit it.
And if we're expecting to destroy the Krakens, then Dominion would work fine. We also know that Voss is going after Haka right now. We could just Amoko to soak up some damage. Boss's damage. This. Hit a Kraken. Hit a ground. Is a little too late though for the force deployment because we want it to go off before Haka's turn. Hey, look, it's the third Kraken. So we were right about that. Kraken, Kraken, Kraken. So I guess we have to destroy an ongoing card. Forgot about that. Uh, so I guess it's Tomoko. Even though I just played it. I was like, hey, let's suck up some damage. I want to keep the Cold Snap. Because that will keep minions in check. And the Grievous Hailstorm also is really good. But Tempest is also likely to die. Is Tempest dying? I guess we end of days. Even though we just have all this set up now. Also the Savage Man. But end of days destroys the force deployment and then we don't get the minions. I guess actually no, we could just... We can do Consecrated Ground to kill the force deployment. It puts the minions in play and then the Krakens eat them up. Hmm. Hmm. Do you have enough damage to kill the TCF Conqueror? Old Snap plus... plus base power would do it. I can do Cleansing Downpour and try to keep Tempest alive for a bit. Localized Hurricane would do damage to Conqueror and Voss, but... I want to save Tempest a little bit. <laughs> Conqueror is gone. Focus Dapper is pretty good. Probably still going to destroy Krakens eventually. Rampage! go. We leave the shock infantry alive. The other three die because they do the most damage or hit Tempest. And I can't hit Voss anymore, so let's hit Kraken, Kraken, Kraken. That? Wrathful Retribution, here we go, we got the nuke. Environment is playing Pillars of Hercules. Oh shit. Oh shit. That's gonna play uh gonna play a thing, I just know it. I just know it. I can smell it. It's gonna play a forced deployment, I just know it. Yeah. Okay. 
Not the worst. Aha! You fool! Can we ever play Rampage? Also, we are going to get an extra Voss play on Tempest's turn. But we can use Flash Floods to kill this with Tempest. So Tempest gets a play and then Flash Floods. Flash Flood, singular, as it were. But he still gets the play Cleansing Downpour, I think. And we can leave two of these minions for Krakens to eat. We probably kill the other Kraken by that point. And we hopefully tie a ha. Uh, Cold Snap deals one. So we could kill a, cra a minion and a Kraken and put both under t under Savage Mana. And then we do Flash Flood to kill the... No, we want to leave the other Kraken. Work Drive is here. We're not localized hurricaning. I'm going to do this to try to reduce some of Voss's damage, and then we get rid of the pillars. I guess I don't have to eat a Kraken. I could eat a minion directly. I just eat a Kraken. Or not eat a Kraken. I destroy a Kraken. Savage mana is eating. <laughs> Savage mana is eating. Uh, Flash Flood is not eating, no. It's not actually dead. This is going after absolute zero, like always. I actually want to leave the fire sworn. Although it's going to die to a kraken anyway. Um, can I ever get? the translocator down low enough it needs to be at five or fewer for it to be hit by another kraken if our goal is for two of these minions to be eaten by haka get a rampage and just try to wipe the board but that will deal damage to tempest which we're trying to avoid i guess we could sacrifice some boss again, and then Tempest doesn't take damage from... from boss. We could still die to the environment. Rampage isn't actually enough to kill the uh, translocator. Oh, I guess, but then Tayaha would. Five and three, so we'd have to hit it with this. Not really a priority, though, is the thing. I don't know. Must be a bit of too much damage, I think. Too much friendly damage. Because in the event of a hallway collapse, it dies. You can at least ping the translocator with the divine sacrifice so that the other kraken goes after it. I think that's fine. I 
protection, I guess. If we do get a hallway collapse, then the Krakens... Oh no, the hallway collapse will kill the first Kraken. Right? Because it deals each target? Yeah. So if the hallway collapse comes out, it does kill the fire swarm, but also the first Kraken dies. So we still have one Kraken dealing damage to the translocator. I wonder if trying to keep Tempest alive is a fool's errand. Toxic seaweed to punish powers. So we can discard a hand to destroy this card, otherwise we take 3 damage per power. I mean, Tempest... if Tempest dies, then his hand doesn't matter. Otherwise, these other heroes have a lot of really good cards. We don't have environment destruction otherwise right now. End of days is environment destruction. <laughs> the Tempest will discard their hand. All right, boss. Horse deployment. How many minions are actually in the trash right now? Oh, there are still quite a bit. Five, four. There's four. And they will all kill... <laughs> so this would be a turn for End of Days, except End of Days would also kill Savage Mana. Ah, I hit a button in chat. Go away. Okay. We can't destroy it out of turn. Other than using End of Days. That does mean it's basically Tempest's Swan Song. Because this is 2 damage, 2 damage, 2 damage. So 6 damage total to Tempest. Cleansing Downpour will heal him for 2, puts him at 1, but then Voss will get a lick. Yeah. Uh, so what's the flip side of Extreme Primor's Tempest? Increase all lightning damage by two. One environment target deals each target one lightning damage. Destroy up to two environment cards. So very environment focused. It'd be nice to combo those two, but we can't really. But with... If, if Haka has... During intercession, you can actually redirect the one lightning damage, and therefore we stop that damage from hitting heroes at least. Increasing lightning damage is a bit tragic because there's no lightning damage here. There is another lightning boost here as well, but uh, there's lightning damage in here though, so it'd actually be actively bad. Destroying two environment cards though isn't bad. Oh, we do have a damage reduction here. I forgot about this. It's been, like, literally sitting here. Okay, so... Does that keep Tempest alive? This is fire damage. We also have fire... Well, that doesn't go to Tempest. It goes to absolute zero, most likely. Energy, energy, psychic. Like, if I reduce energy, one and one is... Uh, I'll now do one each. So one and one is two. And two is four. Well, not that two. So two is four, and then three fires, seven. You still barely die. Still barely die. You chastise, boss? <laughs> Fortunately, these cards were nerfed from version one of Sentinels, where you could play it on character cards. Or yeah, on character cards. It did originally say play next to a target. 
And so you could chastise Fanatic, and so she could deal with damage or something. There was also a... Uh... I think there was also one Visionary. You could re you could play something on Visionary to redirect damage, double by Visionary, and it said anytime you redirect damage, Visionary deals that target damage, but then you would redirect that self-damage elsewhere, and then that would retaliate and create an infinite loop. So it got nerfed. I might be wrong about these being nerfed. It might have always been the case. I was thinking of Visionary, honestly. Okay. End of Days is not worth saving Tempest, because it loses this setup, and it loses this setup. Right? I don't think there's a reason to do that. Is there a reason to do Cleansing Downpour, or just do more damage? Three damage to, to Voss, or heal my team a little bit more before I go? There's also the environment play, which could screw things up even further. We don't have any more redirects, right? Our Divine Sacrifices are in there, there's no more in the deck, we don't have the means of reclaiming it or drawing it in time. Don't have a Ground Pound, you can't draw a Ground Pound in time. Just in the off chance that my math is off. Let's get Haka to eat this. I guess we could have had Haka draw if I killed Kraken. If that top card is now ground pound, then there was a way of saving Tempest. And I missed it. Nope, it was Rampage. To kill Tempest even harder, I guess. And Bolden on Haka is probably really good. He has Talmoko. We have Taiha and Mare now. Environment stopping card plays. Awesome. Awesome blossom. That means we can't rampage this turn. We can just destroy. Okay, so if Tempest dies, then we destroy a leaking room and we're fine. Okay. So hopefully my math was right and Tempest dies. Oh, good. Gene bound guard. Well, that doesn't stop rampage. Hit absolute zero always, please. Ooh, does this... Oh, no. Gene Bound Guard stops it. We could have saved Tempest if it wasn't for the Gene Bound Guard, actually. That is exceptionally tragic. Um, I don't actually want to damage these because I want Rampage to do it. And any damage I do here means then that the Cold Snap kills them. I'll just heal Absolute Zero with this.
What do you know? My math was right. Goodbye, Tempest. What if I destroyed Kraken? That would actually have a use, because Haka would draw more. There's the Enduring Intercession. I'm gonna see, keep that under Savage Mana, though. That's fine. Definitely a bit of a weird turn for Absolute Zero, because he doesn't want to damage anything, lest Rampage screws things up. He could play Coolant Blast. He has taken fire damage, but we can't... This goes to a non-hero target? Yeah. Same problem as this. We can't hit himself. We could do Glacial Structure to draw more. The hope being that we get to... Uh, which one is it? Thermal Shockwave, way at the end. This draws three, plus the draw at the end of the turn. We could also just play Coolant Blast, and then you have it. I think we'll just draw more. I guess we could play Frostbound Drain to do stuff, but... Nah, we can't hit Voss with a minus six. Sub-Zero Atmosphere is actually really good against Voss. Means that any minions that enter play don't act. And unless he destroys that ongoing card, which we said he's very bad at, doesn't do that much. Like, the worst thing about... Um, like, the most dangerous thing about... What's the card called again? <laughs> Sub-Zero, I'm sure. Like, if that card gets destroyed at the start of the villain turn after it played a card, then it benefits the villain. But that only means that villains with an end of turn card play is a bad villain to play that against. And even at that point, it could still be reasonable to play as long as you know that Sub Zero Atmosphere doesn't get destroyed. However, against like Omnitron, it's actively bad because the end of turn card play could be the Electro Pulse Explosive that immediately deals 15 damage to all non hero targets. And that would be bad. Also, there are no minions in here, right? Yay! We could hit Fanatic so that we could do, um... Wrath of Retribution... faster. I'm okay not doing that. Now what? Oh, you have Sacrosanct now. Let's do Aegis. Aegis, so that we could consider being more risky with our HP. Another Zealous Offense. Toxic Seaweed. The good news is Tempest is here to destroy those environment cards for us. Fork Drive Translocator exists. Highest HP, lowest HP, highest HP. So if I hit absolute zero, then he'll be lowest, and then he gets hit for the fire. We can do this. I want to hit the quark drive. Depends on if I want, if I care about the minions entering play, but actually, if we have sub zero atmosphere, they don't matter and they can be put under savage mana. So I will do this. Also, we might just win the game. Might being the operative word. Not a super big operative word, though. It's very likely that this is a one position that it is very difficult to lose at this point. Let me draw a card first. I drew Thermal Shockwave, yes! I guess there is a chance that Atlantis says play an play a villain card first, in which case it could be bad. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Because, what, they play Force Deployment, but there's nothing in here. Or they play... 
a minion that deals damage, but none of those kill me right now. I guess the stalwart, but the stalwart doesn't give me a minion, just deals damage. So we survive this round no matter what. Let me... Do I want to go for big damage right now? This is dealing 20. What if we just win? Are we winning? Is this is 17 damage? The so boss is at 27 and Hakka Battle just wins it. Yeah, how about we just win it? Also, you have two powers. You actually have slightly more damage. Galaxy Brain is to do super big damage to the Quark Drive, put it under Savage Mana, and then use Savage Mana for two more damage instead. Our next damage is increased by 13. I will deal damage. GG. Got our nukes. Tempest's sacrifice. I wonder if there was a way to keep Tempest alive. It seems like it was rather tricky since he was the lowest immediately. Could have perhaps delayed the boss flip, I suppose. But, yeah, it would have been rather tough. Alright, what's the next game? Is it going to be a fast one? Ultimate Gloomweaver. With a randomized start. <laughs> and it's Santa guys as well. Uh, Cult of Gloom Recruitment Party. Let me see what this is. I forget how the ultimate rules work here. So he's immune to melee and projectile damage, and villain relics are indestructible. And if he somehow gets three relics in play, at the end of the villain turn, Gloomweaver deals H infernal damage to the hero target with the lowest HP. Uh, on both sides, Cultist's Destruction puts Zombies into play, and he also deals X Toxic Damage. The H-1 here targets with, with the highest HP, where X equals the number of Voodoo Pins in play plus 2. Who, whoever has fought Gloomweaver on this side? Who has ever fought Gloomweaver on that side? Um, yeah, mainly the melee and projectile immunity is the big concern. Well, Absolute Zero doesn't care. Unity's golems slightly care. The Raptor bots, that is, they care. Fixer, but he could change his damage type. Guys cares a little bit. His projectile gun is bad now. Interesting, though. No. Uh, I think I'll just end it here. It's 9.05. It's been two hours. It's a long enough stream. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your stay. This was Dolphin's Dive here every Thursday at 7 p.m. Be sure to check out the other streams we have on this channel. Every Saturday at 1 p.m. now is Spirit Island Saturdays with usually myself, usually Seamus, and usually John. Before that, Friday at 4 p.m. is Luck of the Seamus with Seamus the Hug Monster. And after that, Tuesday at 7 p.m. is Handle Lobber Live with John. And a lot of our products include Sentinels of the Multiverse, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, Anne's End, and Spirit Island. They are all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices. One Deck Dungeon is also available on Switch. And Sentinels of Earth Prime is in active development. Find more information on those games at handlelobber.com. 
Follow us at twitch.tv slash games or Handelobber on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow me personally at Logic Dolphin on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, and pretty much any avenue. But that does do things for this week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed your stay, and I'll see you around. Good night.